Is this the end of commissions as we know it? We're seeing a lot of clickbait titles out there regarding the real estate industry and the August 17th deadline that is coming up for the new NAR settlement terms to come into play. So if you're a real estate agent, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video, subscribe so that way you can stay up to date. And in today's video, we're gonna cover all the changes you need to implement into your business going forward. Now, all these changes with NAR are gonna happen August 17th, and the Tennessee Association of Realtors just came out with their new forms yesterday. So we're actually gonna cover what those forms are and what it means for your business. So let's jump in. Hey everyone, my name is Zach and I'm the broker of Zach Taylor Real Estate. We have over 400 agents across four states, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. Today we are covering Tennessee's new form updates. So I'm gonna actually post those on the screen so that way you can follow along. So that way we are well informed with the NAR changes that are implemented across the nation come August 17th. And if you're not familiar with what's happening, here's two major changes going forward for all real estate agents. Number one, on all MLS systems, cooperating compensation is being removed from the MLS. So when you show listings and before you used to see two and a half percent, three percent, if you bring me a buyer and you're their agent, that's what you get paid, that's gonna be removed. It's now gonna be up to the agents to negotiate that outside of the MLS. Now that's actually a positive for agents because it allows you the flexibility and freedom to go ahead and negotiate and get yourself involved and actually paid what you think you are worth. Part two, and that's what we're gonna dive into today, is going forward as of August 17th and onward, before you even show a house, you need to have some sort of written agreement with a consumer before you step foot in that house. Now that's different than before. A lot of times agents would show homes in the past and then they would write an offer and then they would get paid. So there's gonna be written agreements going forward. Think of us as service providers. If you call out a roofer, you call out a plumber, electrician, what are they gonna do? They're gonna come over, they're gonna give you a quote. If they do the work, here's how much it's gonna cost, and you can agree and sign that quote and move forward or not. Same thing is coming to real estate agents. We are service providers and we need to be transparent and have everything in writing. So let's jump into what the Tennessee Forms Committee has deemed acceptable adhering to the guidelines of the lawsuit. So first, we're gonna jump into the listing agreement. What's changed on this document? And we're gonna put it up here on the screen. So the first thing is gonna be a mention of seller concessions. So on the MLS, instead of a cooperating compensation or a commission offered to buyer's agents, there's gonna be a new field on the MLS that's called concessions. Now a seller can offer a concession to a buyer and that buyer can use it for whatever they want, their closing costs, their title expenses, or maybe even paying their agent. Now wants to mention that to all sellers going forward that hey, you can offer a concession. So that's what this blue text is. Any blue text is what's being added to the forms. Any red text and strike throughs is what's being removed. The next thing that they added in all bold is they want to be more transparent with consumers and it's always been this way, but we just now have it in writing that broker compensation is not set by law and compensation rates are fully negotiable. It always has been, but now we're gonna state that in writing on a listing agreement. And then with the Tennessee forms, nothing else really changes too much. We've always had this division where on line 62, compensation for the broker, here's the total commission that's gonna be paid out. And then line 68 through 71 is saying that it's optional but there could be a percentage or a part of that total commission that's paid out to a buyer's agent if there's one present. So you might see 5% up here and 2.5% here. It doesn't matter. It's fully negotiable. It doesn't matter. Now let's jump to the exclusive buyer representation agreement and what's changed on this form. So they've reworded a lot of the wording that was where you would put how much you could get paid from a buyer if a cooperating compensation was not offered. They instead moved a lot of the blue text, the additions down here later in the contract, but it says compensation for broker services. Again, it's not set by law and it's fully negotiable, but broker shall be co compensated an amount of blank dollars or blank percent based on the total sales price and consideration of broker services as described herein. Now, with the changes going forward after August 17th, put the highest amount or dollar amount that you want to get paid for helping this client. Because if you're able to negotiate, let's say 2% from the listing side and you only put 2% on here, that's the max you can get. You're setting a new cap for yourself. But let's say the listing wants to offer you 3% and this agreement only says two. You cannot collect that 1% difference. Look down here on line 74, cap on compensation. If broker has an MLS participant, broker shall not receive compensation from any source that exceeds the amount listed above. So that's why it's very important. If you're an agent, I've seen a couple agents do this. They used to put 0% on this buyer's rep agreement and they just say, well, whatever I'm paid from the listing agent, that's fine with me. No, if you put 0%, you're gonna work this deal for free. 
So put the max on line 66. Now looking at line 70 on this buyer's up agreement, that wording actually used to exist in the buyer's up agreement. It's just moved down here with any mention of compensation. So if there's a difference, let's say on this form, you put 3% charge to the buyer and you can negotiate 2% from yourself from the listing side, you reserve the right as the real estate agent to charge the buyer that extra 1% difference. Now that's up to you if you do that or not. Now line 76, the blue text is the last edition. This VA wording has always been there, but it's basically saying uh, if a compensation is considered a non-allowable, basically a VA buyer getting a VA loan, and they determine that you cannot be paid directly from that veteran, then you won't get paid. Now the VA right now has a temporary ban on this, where they actually are allowing veterans to pay for buyer's agents. So that way veterans can still have representation and not have to pay out of pocket for that. But if the VA ever reverses course and goes back to the way it was in the past, then be careful working with a veteran and make sure you are compensated fairly. And now there's two more forms I wanna cover before we jump into some of my opinions with this situation going forward. So this one is RF143. So an exclusive buyer rep states that, hey, I am the one and only agent for you. You're not gonna use any other agent and I'm gonna get paid on this deal. Now for some consumers, that could be a very intimidating document to sign. It's basically saying, hey, we're getting married at the hip here. We're signing a formal contract to work together. A form that's a little bit easier to introduce is this form RF143, written agreement with buyer before touring a home with option to create a non-exclusive agency. So this was the non-exclusive buyer representation agreement, and now they've reworded it to say written agreement with buyer before touring a home to meet the settlement requirements. So this form has a lot less teeth. This basically says, hey, you can hire however many agents you want, but if I show you the home that's the one and we write an offer, we're gonna work together and then I'll get paid. But this allows a consumer, let's say they're looking at different cities and maybe they want agents that specialize in those two different areas, they could actually sign non-exclusive representation agreements with those two different agents and they feel a little bit more confident that, hey, we're not necessarily tied at the hip as strongly as an exclusive buyer's rep. So feel free to bring this out so that way you are meeting the requirements starting August 17th before you tour homes, you send them over something like this. Now we'll scroll down and it has very similar wording to the exclusive buyer's rep lines 56 through 68, and you can read through those, but I recommend this form as an alternative to the exclusive buyer's representation agreement. Now, here's a procedural form that will need to be implemented if you've signed a buyer's representation with a consumer prior to August 17th, and they are not currently under contract, but you're gonna continue working with them, you need to have them fill out this amendment to any buyer's representation agreement entered into prior to August 17th form, RF 642. Now, this is going to clean up this is going to uh, reach the requirements set by the lawsuit settlement terms. And in case you have a buyer's rep out there that says 0%, now you can use this amendment so that way you are compliant and add the proper compensation that you are seeking for working with that consumer. And finally, the last form is the purchase and sale agreement. This is what we're all familiar with. Honestly, not much changed. It's only section lines 401 through 409 that they've updated. They really just crossed out a couple of sentences They've added that broker compensation is not set by law and it's fully negotiable. And for their services, the compensation may come from more than one party. Meaning that as a buyer's agent, maybe you get paid partially from the listing side and then there's that difference from your buyer's rep agreement and you charge the buyer. So what was TAR and the attorney's recommendation for making sure you get paid as a real estate agent? That's very important. So the attorney from the Tennessee Association of Realtors recommended that if the listing side is still offering you a commission, then still use a compensation agreement between the two brokerages. That's the form that we've always been using. Now her recommendation was if a listing commission is not being offered, then you would want to add yourself with verbiage under special stipulations to make sure you get paid. Now let's cover what the attorney said we should include as the language to make sure you get paid. So this wording right here says, selling broker, broker assisting buyer compensation, seller shall pay blank dollars or blank percent of the purchase price of the property to selling broker, broker assisting buyer at closing as a concession to buyer. So that's what the attorney for the Tennessee Association of Realtors has drafted and recommends that we plug into the special stipulation section of the contract to make sure we get paid as a buyer's agent. However, I've talked to a lender about this statement and it's actually gonna put us a little bit in a gray area. And here's why, the use of the word concession. Now every buyer, whatever loan type they get, however much they're putting down, there's only so much concessions that a buyer can actually receive. So if you max out those concessions to make sure they're closing costs, title expenses, and whatever else is covered, 
And then you add an additional line to say, hey, don't forget about me, and it's gonna be paid as another concession, that might actually put them over the limit as a buyer, and you can't actually receive that. So I actually am looking at this sentence, and I think better wording would say, seller shall pay blank of the purchase price of the property to selling broker at closing, period. I'm curious as to why they wanted to add the word concession, because that could throw it out as far as if they're capped already, and then you add yourself to get paid, that might get thrown off the table. So I would actually recommend just put at closing, period, put that in special stipulations of the purchase and sale, and that way you get paid on every single deal that you're working. Now we actually had some training with the Florida Realtor Association, and they actually have wording to help avoid situations where you're working with a consumer and they state, hey, I really, I have the money for my down payment or my closing costs, but I really don't have money to pay you. Can you please only show me homes that are offering some sort of commission to you because I can't afford to pay for you out of pocket. So their recommendation from the Florida Realtors Association was to put this wording. Buyer instructs broker slash realtor to only show houses where compensation is received from the listing office or from seller. And you still have to ask them, hey, if something shows up that meets your criteria but doesn't pay, do you still want me to show you that house? So still ask that question, but that verbiage that I just stated can be put into a buyer's representation agreement so that way you avoid claims of steering because obviously we wanna do what's best for our buyers. We don't wanna just show them homes that we for sure are gonna get paid on. And if you're worried about that, you need to have a conversation with your consumer and put that in a buyer's rep that, hey, buyer instructs broker slash realtor to only show houses where compensation is received from the listing office or from seller. So what's my take as a broker of over 400 agents with all these NAR changes that are coming August 17th? Honestly, I'm excited for them. I think it brings a lot of transparency to the game. And that's what I've told our agents is that, hey, at one point in time, the game of basketball didn't even have a three-point line. But they stated, you know what? To make the game better, we should add a three-point line. Now, there was probably players that were mad at that, but guess what? Everybody adapted to the new rules and the game is still being played. It's the same thing with real estate. 89% of home buyers use the services of a real estate agent. There is so much information overload in today's world that a consumer needs the guidance and expertise of a professional such as yourself. So there's always gonna be room for real estate agents. These are just minor changes. Okay, we have to get a form signed before we take a consumer to go see a house. Just like if I called up a roofer to change the roof on my house, I would know a quote up front. He wouldn't change my roof and then hit me with some massive bill afterwards that I had no idea what was coming. This allows transparency and allows consumers to know ahead of time what they're getting themselves into. And especially in Tennessee, our forms already addressed a lot of these situations. It already laid out different opportunities to state, here's how much I'm gonna get paid, here's my representation agreement. We already had a lot of that base framework already in the state. There's a lot of states that are way worse off or they're way more drastic of changes to get with the times. Tennessee, it's very minimal. And that's why with these forms, we went through it very quickly to show you the different changes, but not much changes. You're gonna have the MLS compensation come off, but it allows you the flexibility to now negotiate and not just be stuck with, well, they're offering 1% or they're offering a dollar. I've already seen that before any of these NAR lawsuits came into play. Now it gives you flexibility to go hustle, to go negotiate. All we gotta do is have a conversation and we're gonna protect ourselves. But have a conversation with the listing side so you get paid, have a conversation with your buyer so that way they understand what's going on and you're gonna be just fine in this real estate industry moving forward. If you have any questions or any comments with everything that's coming, August 17th, comment down below, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see everybody next time.